Um, hello, I'm Martin from Manander Labs, and indeed I will talk about the question whether I should or whether you should run your own RPGI certificate authority. And like every question worth asking, the answer to this one is a resounding, well, that depends. So maybe let's start with a more easy question. Uh, who is in Anand Labs? Um, we are a small foundation based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, and we are developing uh, software and do research to support the network operator community in uh, their work. Um, and we're hoping that with our software, um, it becomes so important to us that you also support our work and uh, make sure that we will uh, be around again. More traditionally, uh, our work was in the DNS. These are probably the most well-known of our uh, products, but we've always also been uh, working in the routing security field. And so the last year, we decided that RPKI has become important enough and uh, sort of present enough that maybe we should look into supporting that with some software of our own. And so we started uh, two projects in the RPKI field, um, which uh, I will mention as I go along. So maybe let's start with a quick uh, recap of what RPKI is. Um, it is short for resource public key infrastructure, which is basically a system where uh, holders of uh, internet numbering resources can make statements about their use of these resources that can be verified. So their statements can be verified that they're actually from the people who uh, hold these resources. Currently, this is pretty much exclusively used for uh, route origin validation, or ROV. Um, but further uses are uh, possible and indeed envisioned. One of them is um, possibly path validation. So route origin uh, validation, basically the statements that we're doing in this field is um, the holder of a resource uh, uh, announces which autonomous systems they intend to announce routes uh, for these resources from. These uh, statements then are called uh, route origin authorizations or ROAS. Um, and then what happens is if you are um, operating a router, if you're participating in the BGP thing, then you can collect these statements and produce filters that you give to your routers. And these filters are basically then deciding whether a, a new route or a route announcement that you receive is valid or invalid um, based on these statements, or if there is no such ROA, then um, they're not found. An important point here is, um, I should probably say that up front, uh, that what this uh, validation does is if there's no statements, then it doesn't do anything with it, so the filter will not filter away routes for which there exists no ROAs. Um, so, to summarize, the route origin validation uh, answers the question, uh, is a certain uh, BGP um, announcement indeed author uh, originated by someone who's uh, authorized to do that? How does it work in practice? Um, RPKI is a public key infrastructure, so there are certificates and stuff. Um, specifically, uh, these certificates are following the a path that um, route oh, sorry, resource assignments take uh, when they come to you. So it all starts up with the RIRs. There's the five ones. These operate or these serve as trust anchors for the entire um, structure, which means that whenever you validate or verify a certain announcement or a certain ROA, you have to go uh, follow it all the way up to one of these trust anchors. Then, depending on which uh, region you're in, there might be national internet uh, registries, and ultimately um, the uh, certificates will end up at the holders of uh, resources, which basically you guys. Um, because there are certificates, that means there needs to be certificate authorities. These are basically the ones that create and sign both the certificates and uh, the ROAs. And because it's, a, it's an actual public thing, so everyone needs to be able to uh, gather all this information, there is also a necessity to, publish, to publicate this thing, these things. Um, for practical reasons, these two functions have been separated. So the uh, certificate authority is independent of the publication server. So you can uh, run the certificate authority 
well, in your basement, hidden away, and just uh, have the publication server exposed to the entire internet. What then happens, there's a third component that's called relying party software, or sometimes also validator, after a, a very popular package for this, um, which sits somewhere and collects all of these announcements, validates them, um, so that checks which ones are valid, and produces a list of things that are called uh, VRPs, validated ROA payload, um, and makes this list available to the routers. So what happens here is that it's not the routers themselves that do all of this gathering and validating, but there's a separate component um, because obviously there's a bunch of crypto involved um, and it needs to be able to talk to the entire internet, which maybe you don't want to have on the management interfaces of your routers. Um, there's a standard protocol to have the relying party software talk to the router. Uh, it's called RPKI RTR. There's also alternative ways as different things implement different things. Um, one of the two projects that we are indeed working on is such a relying party software. Um, it's called Routinator. It's already available. Um, an important point here is, as I said, there is we, what we're currently doing with RPKI is we only do um, origin validation, which means uh, it only looks at where a certain announcement started. It doesn't look at the other uh, the, sort of the path of the announcement, um, which for most of the uh, route hijacks or yeah, uh, that happen is already good enough because most of them aren't actually uh, sort of uh, adversary. They're just someone making a mistake, typing a wrong number. Um, and also because the internet by now routing is so very well connected, um, it's also enough if you're if the, the prefix is actually just one hop away. That said, um, path validation is also possible with um, RPKI. Um, there's currently some work being done. There's two drafts that are in the uh, CIDR Ops Working Group. I believe they're currently sort of being adopted, in the process of being adopted, so maybe we will see some uh, more concrete work there during the course of this year. Now, because there are certificates, because there are CAs, that's always pretty scary. Um, many people don't really want to run their own CA. So in order to, to uh, facilitate uh, adoption of RPKI, the idea was created to say, well, let's then provide this as a service for um, people so that they don't have to run their own one, which means that uh, typically the resource issuer, that is whoever gave your resources to you, runs this as a service for you, which is kind of clever because they control those resources anyway, so they could take away the resources from you anyway, so might as well just trust them um, to also run your CA there. Um, the opposite, where you run your own CA, now is called uh, delegated RPKI. Um, so then you run your own certificate authority, you take care of publishing all of this stuff, and so you do it all of yourself. Um, quick look at hosted RPKI. Um, as said, um, the resource issuers do this, so all, all five RERs have a service um, since 2011. Um, you basically, what you do is um, you go into the portal that they have, you click around, um, and then you get your ROAS published. The concept uh, differs between the five uh, RIRs. So with Aaron, um, you have to do you still have to do a deal with key pairs and stuff. Um, for instance, with um, the ripe solution, you really just go in there, um, click around to create your OAS. Uh, it even helps you if this is um, indeed our own little network with the massive amount of two prefixes and one ASN. Um, so you can um, create your ROAS there. It even helps you um, by showing you the announcements that they have seen so that you can be sure um, to create the correct ROAS. It, you will see there, um, it says alerts are sent to one address, so you also get alerts um, when things go wrong, stuff like that. If you run your own CA, then of course you get none of that. You have to do it all yourself. Um, you have to run and maintain your software. The way this works is that basically um, you start your software and then you talk to whoever gave you the the resources and they create a certificate for you. And there is a protocol for that, so it's not like you have to call them or send faxes or something. Um, there's a standard protocol, so you can actually, your software can talk to their software and do this all in an automated fashion, which means that stuff like uh, renewing certificates when they expire, that can all be automated away. 
Um, so you, you get your certificates, you create your own ROAS, and um, you publish them. Now, the information where um, this publishing happens, that's all part of the certificates itself. So this all happens magically. You don't have to, to say, publish some things in the DNS or some, some other thing. It's just all part of that. So which one uh, is then the right, for, the right uh, solution for you? Um, before we get into that, an important point to make is that if you decide to publish ROAS, which of course you should, uh, then you should go all in. Um, as I said, if there's no ROA for a certain prefix, then that doesn't matter. There's just no filters and everything works fine. But if you start publishing ROAS and they're wrong, then your, uh, your uh, prefixes may not be uh, available anymore. So an important point is um, that once you started creating ROAS, you have to maintain them. If you change your topology, if you change your, uh, your routes, um, make sure to remember to update your ROAS. Um, which means basically, however, you, uh, however your procedures are, RPKI and the ROAS need to be an important part of that. Um, as with anything that you do, you should have monitoring and alerting. And lastly, your help test needs to be uh, prepared to deal with things coming out of ROAS. This is uh, probably more important if you are filtering routes based on uh, RPKI information, then your, uh, your first-line staff needs to be aware of it. They need to be aware that uh, a certain prefix may, un it may be unavailable um, because of broken ROAS. They need to be able to check those and um, sort of uh, know how to deal with, with the situation. If you don't, then um, bad things can happen. Uh, this is an example not to call anyone out, but uh, maybe it's a good example to show that this also happens to big guys, not just to the little guys. Um, in November, Orange moved from slash 16s to more specific slash 17s, forgot to update their ROAS, and uh, big chunks became unavailable. Um, back then, this wasn't such a big deal uh, because there hasn't been so much filtering uh, happening just yet, but uh, with every sort of month, we get announcements of more people who do uh, filtering based on RPKI, so uh, this becomes more and more of an issue. Um, so maybe hosted RPKI really is the better solution. You do not have to install anything. You do not have to have some dedicated hardware. You don't have to deal with keys. Um, also, you don't have to deal with publication. Um, you can just start with this. So you can just go into the portal of your, um, of your uh, RIR and create ROAS and start getting an experience with this, uh, deal with, with, um, with the new technology. Um, why would you then want to actually run your own CA? Um, one point is, or normally it comes down to, if you have lots of resources, of course, clicking around in the web interface gets tedious very quickly. Um, particularly if you are under multiple RIRs, then um, you have to go into all of these interfaces. They all behave differently. You have to remember how they work. Um, that becomes tedious relatively quickly. Whereas if you run your own thing, you can integrate it directly into the way you pro provision your routes and you provision your, uh, your infrastructure. So it can be basically an integrated part of the way you, you do your, uh, your organization, you run your resources. Um, you will also, of course, uh, be in possession of your private keys, uh, if that is, that is important for some people. Um, and you are operationally independent from the RIR itself. Which now, let's look into, um, indeed, let's say you have decided to run your own RPKI. Uh, what is the hardware, the software, and the services around this that you need to take care of? Well, let's start with the software, and it already gets a little difficult there. Um, we are only aware of two projects to have uh, CA software. One is RPKI ID, RPKI ID by Dragon Research. That's basically the original CA software. Um, it's a Python-based solution. I have been told it's not the easiest thing to install. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, and then there's a new project called Krill, which is ours. Um, and that's even harder to install because it doesn't exist yet. Um, we're currently working on it. Uh, we're hoping to uh, have a, something available later this year with the complete solution late 2019. Um, so that's already 
slightly tricky if you want to do this right now. Um, what's the hardware and connectivity you need? Uh, for the certificate authority, you don't really need that much. Even if you have relatively many resources, and even if they change relatively often, there's not that much that's going on. Um, so you don't need some, something big. Um, from a technical perspective, you also don't need an HSM. Um, just having the keys on a machine that is reasonably well secured should be fine. Of course, your legal counsel might be of a different opinion there. Um, the more important and the more challenging thing is the publication server because it is, uh, of course, internet facing. That means it has all the consequences that that means. Uh, people will want to mess with it. Um, so there is an option here to, instead of running it yourself and dealing with all of it yourself, you can outsource it, um, which is what we call the hybrid option. So you run your own CA um, and you leave the difficult part of the publication to someone else. Um, we have spoken to at least one cloud provider who offered to, um, once this is actually available and, and easily doable, um, will offer this as a free service, as a sort of a, a good of the internet kind of service um, to the community. Um, you could even go, any, uh, go further and uh, have a RIR, independent hosted CA. So right now, all of these hosted things are run by the RIRs. There could be also someone who does this for you uh, as an RPGI as a service thing. Maybe there's a business model someone might want to look into. Um, why is publication a bit difficult? Uh, right now, it, it uses rsync which um, I think not many people have operational experience with. Um, so you'd have to run an rsync server, which given that um, RPKI is getting bigger or the repository is getting bigger very quickly, um, you'd have to deal with a bit of traffic there. There is an alternative, RRDP, um, which is an HTTP-based protocol, um, which will make it easier to do what you normally do with HTTP, which is you just throw it at a CDN. Um, RITB is currently deployed in RIPNCC and APNIC, so they are actually using uh, RRDP for publication. Aaron said they might look into doing that this year. Um, but even independently from the RIRs, if you do your own thing, you can still uh, also opt for um, publishing via RRDP. Unfortunately, at this point, uh, rsync is mandatory, so you will have to do um, rsync anyway. Final note, um, and I think I said this already, the uptime here is in the publication server, so if you have a relatively stable network, you absolutely could do run your CA uh, in a bunker somewhere with it never seeing the light of day. So, should you choose your delegated RPKI? Um, well, as I said, the answer is maybe. Um, is it more secure than running a hosted um, solution? Well, not really, especially if you use for the uh, RAR based uh, or if, if you go for the RAR based hosted solution, because they are in control of your uh, resources anyway. They are in control of the certificate that you have to have to run your own. So if they want to mess with you, they can take away your certificate and that's that. Um, is it more convenient? Well, it sort of boils down to um, is the pain of running your own thing um, less or more than having to deal with these web interfaces. Uh, imagine to do that at 3 a.m. in the stress. Um, so basically, it comes down to how many prefixes do you have, how sort of volatile is your network, how often do things change. Um, final note, what happens if my solution breaks? But the good news is that um, this isn't the NSEC. So if you uh, mess up your signing, it doesn't mean that suddenly your whole uh, zone or your whole um, network becomes unavailable. Basically, RPKI is a, a positive statement. If it's not there, nobody cares, which means um, if you lose your keys, if your hardware goes down, if you are under a, a DDoS attack, then what will basically happen is that eventually your ROAS will expire um, and will go away and you're just back at where you were before you were publishing them. Um, which also means that, say, you lose your keys, um, basically just revoke your certificate with the uh, whoever issued it, and you go to your back at the uh, I don't have anything state. Um, a problem, of course, is, especially if you're under uh, DDoS, you cannot update your, your ROAS anymore. Um, so that might be an issue there um, 
that sh should be considered. Um, finally, if we convinced you to look into RPKI and your own um, CA, or we have some uh, reading collected. Uh, specifically, there is our RPKI documentation project, which is under this URI for now. Um, it's an open source thing, so if you have some contributions there to make, um, then you're very welcome. Especially, we want to ma not make this one that is only covering our own products, so Krill and Routinator. So we very much welcome input from everyone who does uh, RPKI-related software um, to contribute contribution to this, con con yeah, to this project as well. And finally, um, if you want to talk to us about RPKI, here's where you can find us. Um, we have a website, surprisingly enough. Um, there is an email address, RPKI team and Anad Labs, and we are, of course, also on the Twitter. Um, we also, which uh, we forgot to put here, there is a RPKI at Anad Labs mailing list, which is very much focused on our own stuff right now. Um, but we also think that maybe if there's more people hanging out, I think there's already quite a few uh, knowledgeable people in the knowledgeable people in the RPKI realm. Um, uh, subscribe to this, so if you need some help, I think that might be a good, uh, a good place to ask. Um, thank you very much, and that open to questions. Matt Petak, uh, nowhere at the moment. Thank you, Martin, great talk. One thing you said on an earlier slide is it's better to have no ROAs than bad ROAs. Uh, as part of the, the software package you're putting together, by any chance, is there going to be something that will validate, warn, or otherwise tell people, hey, you're doing something bad, don't publish this, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot? Because one of the things that I hear right now is there's a lot of holding back from our PKI because the potential for unintentionally causing yourself grief is so high that it's actually safer to just say, you know what? Yeah. What's working today is working. I don't want to mess with it. Um, that's absolutely someone, uh, something that we have in mind. As you saw on the, on the uh, RIPE thing, they do this already. So they have a list of your announcements and uh, help you uh, uh, decide, or decide on correct rules. That's absolutely something we want to do too. Um, we're also looking into um, providing some sort of global monitoring thing. We haven't decided on that yet. Of course, that's a lot of work and a lot of resources that that binds. So we need to see how we, how we can make this possible. But it's absolutely something that we, we realize is very important. Um, and that's also very important for the community at, at large. Awesome, thank you. Hello, dear folk, Deutsche Telekom. Uh, okay, I stay out for a change uh, out of uh, being a wise guy, so I'm not asking questions where I know the answers. Um, yesterday at the RPKI uh, operational roundtable, uh, someone brought up the observation that the user interfaces for the hosted services seem to be fairly different across all of the existing CAs. Uh, what I don't know, I, I have been running f out of my lab uh, for something like 10 years, uh, my test CA, uh, but just with one upstream CA. And actually that already proved to be a challenge once in a while. Um, have you looked into how the interfaces the operational interfaces for connecting your delegated CA to the various potential upstreams, are they all the same or is there also a challenge? So there is a standard uh, protocol, there's some RFCs on that matter. Um, we haven't, we, we don't have any op operational experience with that just yet, but um, we will definitely, we are in contact with the RARs at least, um, they are very much interested in what we're doing, and um, that will definitely be part of once we get to that point. I mean, it's still very early days for us. We just get the CA working at all, and then um, we're going to see how, how we integrate this with whatever else is out there. Um, we have plans to do interrupt testing with everything else that's out there. Um, yeah. We are aware that um, one of the use cases for running your own CA is indeed if you have multiple upstreams and need to deal with that. 
Um, so also uh, things where um, the system can decide itself what needs to go on which. Um, so instead of just saying, give this row are there, um, it just knows what your resources are or what your delegated resources are and uh, then figures out stuff. That's all ideas that we have. That's all very important for us because we know that that's the use case uh, that people have for this whole system. Um, so that's definitely something that we're going to have to make work. Um, just uh, doing follow-up. Uh, yes, I'm aware there is a protocol, but a uh, standard one, but there seems to be something I don't recall the exact term, uh, a business protocol that has to be used, and that seems to be specific to the various CAs, or say, better say, RIRs. Yes, but I think you only do that once when you set up your thing. I'm not 100% sure. I can't quite answer that just yet. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>